Hey guys, this guide makes heavy use of annotations, so I'd strongly recommend enabling them in order to skip to the parts of the quest that you want to see. And also, for the list of requirements, please use the pause button in order to read them properly. Enjoy the guide. To start the quest, head to Narda in the southeastern desert, bring some water skins, a Varok teleport or a dig site pendant, and some rope. To get to Narda you can purchase a carpet ride from Shanty Pass to Polnifenich, or if you complete a love story then ship a house teleport tablet to Polnifenich, then run south of the town, then purchase a carpet ride to Narda. Or you can use the fairy ring code DLQ and run south until you get to Narda. Talk to Ali the Wise in the northern part of town and ask him about his research. Answer his various questions about the gods and then ask him if he can help you get to the dig site. He'll give you a dig site pendant which you can then use and then you should run south to the dig site exam centre. If you didn't get a dig site pendant, now's the time to use your Varok teleport and run southeast to the dig site centre. Talk to Dr Nabanik at the exam centre and ask him everything that you can. Then once you get the option to say, just tell me what you want, choose that option. Next, talk to the archaeological expert and choose the top options to convince him that Dr Nabanik is trustworthy. If you do this right, you should get a restoration certificate which you should then give to Dr Nabanik. He will then ask to meet you in a temple beneath the dig site, so for this part you'll need a piece of rope. If you didn't bring any rope then you can talk to Dr Nabanik who will then give you some. Go to this location on the map which is in the centre of the dig site, north of the exam centre. Use your rope on the winch to go down into the temple and run south and talk to Dr Nabanik who is now called a Zanadra. He'll ask you to retrieve a barrow's icon and a frosting horn which you can ask more about. Before you leave make sure you receive a backpack from him, open it and read the letter inside. Ask him about the letter and then proceed to any bank. Now it's time to go and kill all the Barrows brothers. If you've done Barrows before you know what to do, just ignore this part. But otherwise, on screen now is what I personally chose to use, which is a mage setup using Arims and a Polypore staff with Entangle runes to keep the Meliers away from me. I also took melee gear to kill Karil with, which is the Nezihelm, Torag's Whip and DDS. Adjust the gear that you want to use based on your liking, if you don't like my setup. Or you can just use range and mage if you want to, but again, it's just personal preference. Just bear in mind that Arim is weak to range. Also in my inventory I have quite a bit of food and I've brought a super attack and strength potions as well as a prayer potion. You may want to bring more prayer potions and food if you're a lower combat level. Just bear in mind that I'm 122 combat, so if you're a lower level you might want to bring a bit more just for safety. And I have also brought a teleport just in case anything bad happens. The Barrows Mounds are located to the south of Canafis through the swamp. The best way to get there is to use the Draken's Medallion, which is a quest reward from the Branches of Darkmire. If you've not done that, then to get there you can use the Ectophile and run west to get to Canafis, or you could also use the Kirill Teleport from the Ancient Magic Spellbook to teleport straight to Canafis. And then from Canafis you can either go down the trapdoor behind the pub and go through the wall, and once you've emerged from this tunnel, climb up and over the tree bridge to the south and then continue south until you come to a boat and travel down the river in his boat. Or you could also use the Fairy Ring Code BKR to teleport directly to Mortmire Swamp and then run southeast to find the boat and travel down the river in. Once you've gone down the river in the boat, the Barrow's Mound should be just to the east. Do be aware that whilst travelling through the Mortmire Swamp that your food might be turned rotten so you may want to bring some spares just in case that happens. Pause the video now to see the suggested kill order of each brother. To start killing the brothers use the spades on top of the mounds and open the crypts inside. Bear in mind that when you're inside the mounds your prayer will be slowly drained so keep a careful eye on your prayer whilst you're fighting. For Darok, use Protect from Melee and kill him. If you get a tunnel instead of a brother, don't go into it just yet until you've defeated the others first. For Carol, use Protect from Range and kill him. For Verak, use Protect from Melee, but do note that he can hit through prayer, but Protect from Melee just reduces the maximum hit, and you may need to eat some food for this one. For Guthan, use Protect from Melee and kill him. And for Torag, use Protect from Melee and kill him. And lastly, for Arim, use Protect from Magic and kill him. Note that Magic works fine on him. Once you've killed all the brothers, except the one with the tunnel in the crypt, go back to that crypt and enter it. Pause the video now to see a crudely drawn map to help guide you through the tunnels. 
You won't be able to open all of the doors, so make your way around until you can open one of the four doors that lead to the middle room with the chest. As you go through the doors, the last brother that you haven't fought yet will randomly appear and start attacking you, so be prepared to use protection prayers whenever you go through doors. Once you come to the door that allows you to enter the middle room, you'll have to answer a puzzle before you can enter. Kill anything that might be attacking you in that room and then use one of these following solutions to open the door. Once you're in the middle room, loot the chest to get a barrow's icon, and then teleport out of there. If you want, you can wear a ring of wealth whilst opening the chest to increase your chances of receiving better loot. Head back to Azanadra at the dig site. Take the barrow's icon back to Azanadra and then head to a bank. For the next step, you'll need high defense gear. There'll be lots of water fiends which attack with both ranged and mage attacks, so you can either wear high mage defense gear, such as dragon hide or carols and protect from their range attacks since their range attacks hit higher or you can wear high ranged and melee defense gear and protect from mage bear in mind that you'll need to kill a level 177 ice demon which uses melee and magic attacks so for that reason i would personally recommend going with high range and melee defense gear because you won't need to kill water fiends so you won't need to protect from their range attacks so much whereas you might need to use protect from mage a bit more the items you'll need are plenty of telegrab runes which can be used on any spellbook, the heat globe that you got earlier on in the quest, a hammer, and Ali's pendant to get straight to the dig site after you're done with this part of the quest. I'd recommend bringing a super set, especially a defense potion to help minimize the damage you take, prayer potions and plenty of food. I also brought Enhanced Excalibur with me for a free occasional heal and defense boost. Make sure you also take some form of dragonfire protection, such as a dragonfire shield or a potion, because there's going to be some dragons that you'll need to run past, you won't actually have to kill them. Head towards the marker shown on this map, which is north of Relica. The easiest way to get there is to use the fairy ring code DKS, which takes you to this location. Or you can teleport to Camelot and just run north from there. Once you're at this location, use the canoe in the water to head upstream to the next location. Head east until you come to a huge ice block. Use the heat globe on the pedestal nearby to melt the ice. Squeeze past the ice and then proceed east around the south side of the building nearby and go through the archway that you come to. Once you're in this area, head up the western steps. Run slightly to the east and go down the first steps that you come to. Climb up the wall by clicking on the damaged wall which is above the door in front of you. Run to the northwestern side of this upper level and climb down the smashed rampart, then proceed down the trapdoor in front of you. Once inside, head to the east and take the heat globe from the radiant pedestal. Head back to the west and put the heat globe on the western pedestal in the first room that you were in. Trap the water fiend that attacks you by luring it into the first room that you were in, running into the room to the west and telegrabbing the heat globe that you placed by right clicking on it and selecting the telegrab option. Use the heat globe on the pedestal in this room to reveal a ladder which you should then go down. Head south and pick up the heat globe on the floor and then go back to the north and use the heat globe on the pedestal. Run east and pick up the heat globe from the radiant pedestal and then head back to the west, go back up the ladder and head up the stairs that you came from. Climb up the damaged wall to the west and then run to the east and use the imperfect heat globe on the smashed globe holder. Then right click on the smashed globe holder and click on push. Head back west, climb down the wall and go down the trap door again. Go west and go down the trap door then head east. Follow the path until you come to a radiant pedestal, take the heat globe from it and then head back east where you came from until you come to a pipe on the southern wall which is directly north of the pedestal in the room which is blocked off. Use the heat globe on the pipe, then whack the heat globe through the pipe using your hammer. Run back around the path to the west, then proceed up the ladder in the room. Run west until you find an ice demon. Pot up and protect from mage and then kill the ice demon. There's nothing hard about this fight, so it shouldn't take very long. When you've killed it, pick up the frost and horn and head back to Azanadra at the dig site. Talk to Azanadra to give him the frost and horn and spam through the dialogue. Head back up the rope to the north and talk to the assassin who should now be standing next to the winch. Spam through the dialogue choosing any options and he'll give you a relic. Head back down the winch and give the relic to Azanadra and you'll get a few cutscenes. Once the cutscenes are over, spam through a bit more dialogue to complete the quest and earn your various XP rewards as well as the infamous Ancient Curses. You'll be given 3 XP lamps, 2 of them give 20k XP to any combat skill above 50 except prayer, and the other lamp gives 23k XP to any skill over level 50. You'll also get a book called the Ancient Hymnal, which you should then read to unlock the Ancient Curse prayers, and then use the altar to the south of the room to switch your prayer types, just like how you'd change magic spell books. If this guide's been useful, please consider giving us a thumbs up and subscribing. If you need any help, please leave a comment and I'll reply to you as soon as possible. 
Otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.